Today, groups made easy. Here's two typical exam questions. Before we go to the exam questions, let's just take a minute to revise what it is that makes a group. Well, we need two things. We need two components and we need four rules to be obeyed. So the two components are that we need a set, which is just a collection of elements, and we need an operation. And an operation is something like addition or multiplication, something that takes two elements and produces a single element. So we might uh, have a, a group that's uh, the integers, that's the set, and the operation will be addition. Now to the four rules. Well, the first rule is we have, must have closure under the operation. This just means that no matter which of the elements that we take, when we perform an operation, we always end up with an element that's in the set. So we know, for example, with the integers, that when we add two integers, we always get an integer. So that's fine. The second rule is that there must be an identity element. Now, when you were younger, you probably uh, realised that um, with addition, zero is special because if you add zero, it doesn't change the result. And similarly, with multiplication, if you multiply by one, it doesn't change the result. So these um, elements that don't change the result under the operation are special, and I'm calling them the identity element. So with the integers, we know that zero uh, is an identity element because take a number five, five plus zero equals zero plus five equals five. The next thing we need is the existence of an, an inverse. For every element, we must be able to find an element of the set so that when we perform the operation, we get the identity element. Of course, we have to show this for, for, for every element of the set, but in the integers, an example would be that the number seven has an inverse, which is the number negative seven, and we see that seven plus negative seven is equal to negative seven plus seven, which is equal to zero. And the final thing we need is associativity. And that says that if we have three elements and we have the operation performed twice, well, it doesn't matter which of the operations we do first. So, for example, if we have these three integers, uh, 7, 5, and 2, well, it doesn't matter whether we go 7 plus 5 and then plus 2, or we go 5 plus 2 and then we add the 7. Okay, now let's go back to the exam question. So, to part 1, here we have a set, but we have no operation. So a suitable brief explanation is there is no operation. On to part two. Here we have that funny symbol Z, which is the set of integers. And the operation is multiplication. And here I suppose my thinking would be take the number two. That's an integer. Two by a half equals one. So a half is the inverse of two. But a half is not an integer. It's not in the set. So an answer would be the integer 2 has no inverse. On to part 3, that funny C symbol is complex numbers. So we're talking about all the complex numbers other than 0 and 1, and we're using multiplication. Um, so here, um, I think the problem is the identity element. Uh, 1 is the identity element, since z times 1 equals 1 times z equals z for all complex numbers z. But 1 is not in this set, it's specifically excluded. So answer, the set has no identity element. That's the most obvious answer, but you could also look at it another way. You could say, take the number 3, 3 times a third equals 1, but 1 is not in the set. So there is no closure under multiplication. And finally on to number four, and here we could look at it this way. One and three are in the set. One plus three equals four, but four is not in the set. So answer, the set is not closed under addition. In question one, we could show that a group rule didn't work by just finding one example where it didn't work. 
But in question two, we're going to have to work a little bit harder because we're going to have to show that the rules work for all elements of the set. I've picked a couple of, yeah, I think, interesting situations here because I want to make the point that mathematical groups are much more than just the real numbers and the complex numbers. And as you do more mathematics, you'll see that a lot of, a lot of sets and operations do uh, uh, turn out to be groups. So in this first one here, we've got an in interesting situation because we've got all the reals except the number negative 1. And we've got this funny operation. It's sort of the combination of addition and multiplication. So this star here uh, works as follows. Here's an example, uh, 5 star 7. Well, that equals 5 plus 7 plus 5 times 7. Which, what's that? 35 plus 12, 47. So if we're going to show uh, associativity, this is, uh, this is one way we could do it. Suppose x, y, and z are elements of the set. We have to show that bracket x star y close bracket star z equals x star bracket y star z close bracket. And I've put here that it will suffice to show, and you can see this expression here, it's, it's easier sometimes to just show that something is equal to zero. So I put the left hand side here, the uh, bracket x star y close bracket star z minus x star bracket y star z close bracket. And let's start to expand this out. So the bracket tells us that we should do that first. So here I've, taken, I've got here x star y and here I've expanded x star y. And here I've got y star z, so I've expanded that over here, y plus z plus y times z. Now for the second line, what do I need to do? Well, here you can see that I've got two, essentially two elements. The first is x plus y plus xy, and then I've got the star and the z. So to expand that, I have the first element, x plus y plus xy, plus the second element, z, plus the product of the two, which you can see here. And then I start subtracting this part here, and you can see the result there. And when you work all of that out, you get zero. And so the set and the operation are associative. Next, it asks us to prove the existence of an identity element. So I'm just going to find the identity element first, and then I'll, I'll prove that this identity element exists for all elements of the set. So I've just taken 5 as a, as a random element of the set here. So let E be the identity element. Well, that means uh, that 5 star E equals 5. So 5 plus e plus 5e equals 5, and therefore e plus 5e equals 0, so 6e equals 0, and this means that e equals 0. So for this set and this operation, it looks like 0 is the identity element. So now let's do a proof that it actually works for all elements of the set. Suppose x is an element of the set, then x star 0 equals x plus 0 plus x times 0, which is equal to x. And also we have that 0 star x equals 0 plus x plus 0 times x, which also equals x. So we've shown both of those equations are true, and um, so now we can conclude so an identity element exists. It's a beautiful problem that with the combination of multiplication and addition as the operation it comes from a book by John Freilich. On to the last part of the question, and this group's a little bit unusual in that it's the first time that I've put up a group with a finite set rather than an infinite set. Now the operation is multiplication modulo 5, and this means that we express all the answers in terms of the remainder when we divide by 5. So, for example, 3 times 4 would normally be 12, but because we're dealing in modulo 5, we're just going to write 2, because that's the remainder of 12 divided by 5. Seems like a crazy idea, but um, most of the internet security in the world is based on this sort of modulo mod multiplication. If you're interested, have a look at my video, RSA Code Made Easy. You'll see there, uh, modulo arithmetic is very common. Anyway, to show that each element has an inverse, the easiest way here is just to write out a, a multiplication table, like we used to do in primary school, but instead we're going to do it modulo 5. 
So here's the table. We saw before that 3 by 4 equals 2, and here's the complete table. And you can actually just see that each element has an inverse, so that for any element that we take, 1, 2, 3, or 4, it's always possible to find another element, so that when we multiply modulo 5, we get 1. So we could just answer that it is clear from the table that each element has an inverse. It's also clear that when we perform the operation, that we always get an answer of 1, 2, 3, or 4. So the group is closed under the operation. If you think about it, if we're dealing in remainders when we divide by 5, the only possibilities would be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, and we don't get any zeros here, so the answer would be that from the table it is clear that multiplying any two elements, modulo 5, gives us an answer of 1, 2, 3, or 4, so the group is closed under the operation. That's it for Groups Made Easy. I hope you found it useful.